This screencast is going to look at how to test the assumptions, run and interpret an ANCOVA analysis. An ANCOVA is similar to an ANOVA where we want to look at differences in a dependent variable among different groups. However, where the ANCOVA is different to the ANOVA is that we can use a covariate. A covariate is a variable of secondary importance to a specific study, but which can affect the degree to which the independent variable or variables relates to the dependent variable. The influence of this covariate or covariates, as these can be multiple variables, is statistically controlled for in an ANCOVA. In this example, we're going to look at whether there are differences in the sector of school, so private and state schools, and also gender, so males and females, in their levels of PE enjoyment. However, we are going to use competence as a covariate, as it's likely that how competent pupils feel in PE will impact upon how much they enjoy PE. This is an example of a two-way factorial ANCOVA, but it is also possible to run one-way ANCOVA and more complicated factorial ANCOVAs, such as three-way factorial ANCOVAs. Also, it is possible to test more than one covariate within the ANCOVA analysis. In our data file, we have four variables. We have sex and sector, so private or public school, and females and males for sex. And we also have variables for enjoyment, so how much pupils enjoy PE, and also their levels of perceived competence. Before we run the ANCOVA, we need to first test the assumptions. A factorial ANCOVA has the same assumptions as a factorial ANOVA, however there are also three additional assumptions which should be met. The first is that the covariate, so in our case competence, should be measured on either an interval or a ratio scale. In this example, competence is measured on an interval scale, therefore we have met this assumption. The next assumption is that the covariate and the dependent variables should be related and the relationship should be linear at each combination of the levels of the independent variable. So for example, the relationship should be linear for male pupils at private school, female pupils at private school, male pupils at a state school and female pupils at a state school. To test this assumption, we need to go to Analyze, then select Correlate and choose Bivariate. Next, we want to select the dependent variable enjoyment and the covariate competence and move these to the variables box. Next, click OK to run the correlation. The output shows that enjoyment and competence are positively correlated with a person's correlation value of 0.96. The significance value of 0.001 tells us that this correlation is also significant. Therefore, we can say that we've met the assumption that the covariate and the dependent variable are correlated. While we have satisfied that the dependent variable and the covariate are related with the correlation, we need to check that this is this relationship is linear across each combination of the levels of the independent variables. To do this, we're going to go to the graphs menu and select chart builder. Click OK. And next we want to select scat dotter from the menu. We want to select the option in the top left, which is a simple scatter plot, and drag this to the large box above.
Next I'm going to select enjoyment and drag this to the Y axis box. Then I'm going to select competence and move this to the X axis box. Next select the groups or point ID tab and then select rows panel variable. Now we can drag sector to the new panel box which has been created. Finally, we're going to select columns panel variable and then move sex to the box created. Then click OK to create the scatter plot. The output shows a scatter plot of the relationship between enjoyment and competence at each combination of the independent variable. To check that the relationship is linear in each of these combinations, we need to add a line of best fit to our scatter plot. To do this, we double click on the graph and this will open a new window. In this new menu, we want to go to the Elements tab and select Fit Line at Total. If we click Close, we can then see these lines on the graph. Of the four combinations of the independent variables, it seems that the relationship is positive and linear, as was our correlation, in females in the private sector and males in the state sector. As we have satisfied the assumption in two of the four cases, we can only say that we have partially met the assumption. However, we can still proceed with the main ANCOVA analysis. We just need to ensure that our analysis is still credible given that we did not meet completely this assumption. For example, if we were to get in the main analysis F values which have marginal P values, that is values around 0 0.05, we may want to interpret the results with caution, as it could be that our analysis has been compromised by not fully meeting this assumption. If in the main analysis we find that the F values have P values which are highly significant, so much lower than 0 0.05, or highly non-significant, so much greater than 0 0.05, we can trust that the analysis has not been compromised by only partially meeting the assumption. If we find that the second assumption is not met in all of our data, we should drop the covariate from the analysis or transform the covariate to establish a linear relation with the dependent variable. The third assumption of ANCOVA is that the direction and strength of the relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable should be similar at each combination of the levels of the independent variables. This is shown by a non-significant interaction between the independent variables and the covariates. So in our case we would want to look at the interactions between sector and competence sex and competence, and the three-way interaction between sector, sex and competence, and we want, want all these interactions to be non-significant. To test this, we want to go to the Analyze menu, select General Linear Model, and then select Univariate. We run this analysis as the same way as we would do the main ANCOVA analysis. However, we just adapt the type of model which is run. So, I'm going to select sector and sex and move these to the fixed factors, as this is another word for independent variables. I'm going to move enjoyment to the dependent variable box, and I'm going to move competence to covariates.
Next, I'm going to select Model so that I can specify the model we want to run. Under Specify Model, I want to change this from Full Factorial to Custom. Next, I'm going to select the factors and covariates of sex, sector and competence and move these to the model box. However, before I do that, I need to change the build terms to be main effects instead of interaction. Then I want to select all three factors and covariates again. However, this time for the build terms, I want to select all two-way, which will run all two-way interactions between these variables. As we are not interested in the sector by sex interaction, we can click on this and move it back to the factor and covariates box. Finally, we want to again select all three factors and covariates, select all three-way build terms which will look at the three-way interaction between these variables and move these into the model box. Next click continue and then OK to run this analysis which will test our final assumption. In the output, we're only interested in the interactions between sex and competence, sector and competence, and the three-way interaction between sex, sector, and competence. And as we said earlier, we want a non-significant result for these. If we look at the F and their subsequent significance values, we can see that all the significance values are above 0 0.05, meaning that they are non-significant and we have met the assumption that the direction and strength of the relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable is similar at each combination of the levels of the independent variable. Now that we have tested and satisfied the assumptions of ANCOVA, we can run the main analysis. To do this, we go to Analyze and again select Univariate from the General Linear Model menu. As we have already tested the assumptions, the variables are already in the correct position for running the analysis. However, we need to go to model to change the terms we built for testing the assumptions. In the menu, we want to change the model from the custom model we built for testing the assumptions to a full factorial model. Then click continue. Next, select plots. Here we want to move sector into the separate lines box and sex into the horizontal box. As we have two levels in both of our independent variables, it does not matter which variable goes in which box. If we had one independent variable which had more levels than the other, it generally makes more sense to put the one with most levels in the horizontal box. After we have clicked add, we then click continue. Next, click options. Here, we can select all our factors or independent variables and the interaction between them and create means in our output. If we had an independent variable with more than one level. We may want to do this as we can then conduct post hoc tests. If we move the means across, tick the compare main effects box and then select Bonferroni, it will run these post hoc analyses as SPSS doesn't produce these in ANCOVA. As we only have two levels for each of our independent variables, it is not necessary to do this for this example. We do, however, want to select descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power, 
and homogeneity tests. Uh, these are all important when interpreting our results. Click continue and then OK to run the analysis. In the output, the first box we get is the descriptive statistics which give us the means and standard deviations for females and males in the private sector, females and males in the state sector, and females and males overall. The next box we want to look at is the box for the Levine's test of equality of variances. This tests that the variance in the dependent variable is equal across all levels of the independent variable or variables. We want for this assumption that the significance value is above 0 0.05, therefore a non-significant result. And as we can see, in this example, the significance value is 0.99, meaning that we have satisfied the assumption of equality of variance. In the box for the tests of between subject effects, we can see that competence has an F value of 6.92 and a significance value of 0 0.01. As this is significant, it indicates that higher levels of perceived competence are associated with higher levels of enjoyment. However, when we look at the F values for both sector and sex, we can see that the significance values are above 0 0.05. Also, when we look at the sector by sex interaction, the significance value is also above 0 0.05. This suggests that when competence is used as a covariate, there are no differences in the level of enjoyment between private and state schools and also between males and females, nor is there an interaction between these two variables. The partial eta squared is a measure of effect size and the observed power shows the statistical power of the study. The plot shows that while there are some differences in the means of males and females and the sector, that the differences are not that great, backing up our non-significant findings. When writing up our results, we want to report the F values and the P values for both of our independent variables and also the interaction. We also want to report the F value for our covariate of competence. That concludes the screencast for ANCOVA. We have shown how to test the assumptions of ANCOVA, how to run the analysis, and how to interpret and report the results.